those two songs, when Banda played the Lord's Prayer during the offering and Clara singing in the garden, they just both go so well with what I'm preaching this morning. And uh, so I'll ask you to take your Bibles and open them to Matthew 26. 26th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to look at verses 40 and 41. All right. Jesus was praying in that garden. He was in that garden along with his father. And uh, he had told his disciples to be watching, to watch and pray. And it says to us in chapter 26, verse 40, said he, after praying for a little bit, he came unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto them, saith unto Peter, Why could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray. Watch and pray, he said. He told them, he said, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. May the Lord bless what we had just read. So here again, the question is, what is a Christian supposed to do? Over the last several weeks, we have discovered multiple things that a child of God should do. And now this morning, I am going to say that a Christian should watch. But watch what? Or watch out for what? Listen, we need to keep our eyes open. We need to stay awake. We need to watch and watch carefully for the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? They are clever schemes that he uses to ensnare us into temptation. Have you heard about the young couple that hadn't been married long, struggling to make ends meet, and they, the wife knew that her husband didn't have a whole lot of money, but one day she was window shopping and saw a beautiful dress. She came home with that dress along with a receipt totaling $250. The husband looked at his wife and he said, honey, you know we don't have that kind of money. You know we're just struggling to make ends meet. I can't afford it to buy you a $250 dress as much as I would want to. And she, he said, why did you do it? She said, well, I was looking at it through the window and Satan whispered into my ear and said, you would look beautiful and fabulous in that dress. And so I bought it. And the husband said to her, but did I not tell you that when we are tempted by the devil, that we should just look at the devil and say, get behind me, Satan. Did you not do that? She said, yes, dear, I did. I saw the dress. He whispered into my ear and said, you would look fabulous and beautiful in this dress. Buy it. And then I said, Satan, get behind me. And he whispered in my ear and said, it looks beautiful and fabulous from back here too. Satan will do whatever it takes to tempt us to commit sin. And that's why Jesus said to those disciples, it was historically for them, it is spiritually applicable to us, he said, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh it is weak. Now, as I've always said behind this pulpit, Jesus would never ask anyone, his disciples, whomever, you and I, he would never ask any of us to do anything that he would not do himself. He said for us to watch and pray. Watch out. Look out 
for the wiles, for the deception, for the trickery, for the evil diabolical work of the devil. Watch out for it. Now, he would never ask us to do that if he was not willing to do it himself. Do not think, not for one iota of a second, that Jesus was never tempted to commit sin. And the whole time he was on this earth, he was tempted to commit sin. Some would argue that and say, no, no, no. It was the three temptations in the wilderness. That's not the only time he was tempted to commit sin. It's just that Matthew and Mark, they specify on that and tell us about that. Matthew and Luke, that is. And we find that once upon a time he was in the wilderness praying and fasting. Fasted and prayed for 40 days. And we find these three temptations in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, find that the devil had come up to him and said, Jesus, you know, you've been out here 40 days fasting, and I I know you've got to be hungry. Here's some big old rocks over here, some stones. Uh, If you are truly the Son of God, why don't you turn them into bread? Jesus came back against the devil. He was watching. He was praying as he asked us to do. He was in that wilderness watching and praying. The devil came his way. He was prepared. He gave, he fought back with the word of God and said, it is written, Matthew 4, 4, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The devil, I'm sure, was very upset about that. And so he took him on top of the temple and the pinnacle of the temple of that and said, if you are truly the son of God, jump off and surely God will keep you from getting hurt. In Matthew 4, 7, Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then I'm sure the devil is very furious by now. And he took Jesus on top of a mountain and he said, look at all of the kingdoms of the world. If you will bow down to me, you may have all of these kingdoms. And Jesus said in Matthew 4.10, it is written, get thee hence, Satan, it is written, thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's what he's holding. So Jesus said we're to watch and we are to pray. The devil wanted to destroy, he literally wanted to destroy Jesus to no avail. He wanted to destroy Jesus while he was on the cross. He couldn't do it. And he wants to destroy us. See, when Jesus died on that cross and was buried in that tomb, and three days later he rose from the dead and is alive, he ascended to build his father, and he's at the right hand of his father in heaven now. But he sent to us his Holy Spirit to indwell us, to live in, with and through us. And so, therefore, as I taught last Wednesday night, we are now his arms, his hands, his feet, his legs. He's the head of the church. We are the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, let me tell you, everyone hear me right now, I will say it loud and clear, the devil cannot touch our immortal, never-dying soul. If it belongs to God, he can't touch it. He may try to convince us that he can take away our salvation, but he cannot touch our soul. Let it be known. But he can touch our bodies. And he can make life miserable for us. He can make it physically, mentally, emotionally, disturbing and painful to us. He can really do a number on us. And let me say that the good for nothing, the good, and he is good for nothing, the good for nothing devil desires to destroy us. When I was a kid growing up, I used to watch on the television this wrestling that they had. Yeah, I did when I was a kid. And there was a wrestler called the Super Destroyer. And some of you about my age, you may remember him. He wore the mask 
I wrote his name down. Let's see, what was it? Uh, Don Jardine was his name. And he would wear that mask, and he seemed invincible. He beat all of his opponents, and it seemed like no one could beat him, no one could unmask him. He was called the Super Destroyer. Well, let me tell you something. The real super destroyer is the devil. And he wears a mask too. He will mask himself with things that look glorious and attractive and beautiful to us. Things that look appealing to us. He may mask himself with money. He may mask himself as another person. He may mask himself uh, with hobbies and activities and whatever. He, he's, he's, a, he's the master at it. He's very, very, very formidable foe. And if we think, if any of us think we can beat the devil without the help of God, we are absolutely a people that are most naive. We cannot beat the devil without God on our side. And I'll tell you, he wants to destroy us just like he wanted to destroy Peter, the apostle Peter. And, and Jesus gave a, a warning to Peter about this. And he's given a warning to us through his word that the devil wants to destroy us. He said to Peter in Luke twenty two thirty one, 31, Simon, Simon, that was Peter's name, Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. The process of sifting wheat was, of course, separating the edible wheat from the unedible chaff. And, and, and it was a process of doing a lot of shaking. And, and the terminology behind that verse in regards to Satan sifting us as wheat means that he wants to literally take us and shake us to the core. And he will do that. Satan wants to literally destroy us. And he knows our weaknesses. He knows where to throw the fiery darts, where to tempt us, and how to tempt us, and when. He knows what will get to us and make us fall and succumb to temptation. Why does the devil know us so good? Why does he know us so well? Because he studies us. He studies us. He knows all about us. And let me tell you, Job was one man in the Bible who was really, really destroyed by the devil. The devil took away his family, took away all his money, his land, everything, just his, his own health. The only thing he didn't take away from him was his wife. And his wife pestered him and told him to curse God and die. But God was there with him, but he lost it all. He lost everything. But prior to that happening, right before it happened, there was a conversation in heaven between God and the devil. And this is what happened. Job chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord said to him, Satan, what are you doing? And Satan answered God, and he said, walking to and fro in the earth and up and down in it. Let me stand here and say that the devil is still doing that now through his demons. He's walking up and down, left and right, north and south, east and west, everywhere. I'll tell you, the devil is in this church walking up the aisles and through the pews. He's trying to distract us. He's trying to lure us into a, a focus on Sunday dinner or whatever it might be that would get our attention off of, of God. And, and the devil, is he comes to church. He's faithful. He never misses. When we all leave out the building, he's going to go out with us and get in the car with us and we go to home. He's going to go to home with us. He's going to be right there beside us in our house, tempting us. The demons are alive. They are active, and they will try to deceive us and lure us away from God. 
So wake up, everyone. Let us wake up. Let us watch and let us pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. For the Spirit indeed is willing on the inside of us. But our flesh, our emotions, our mind, our heart is weak indeed. I tell you that the devil is like a predator stalking his prey. We are the prey, he's the predator. And he's watching us. He never takes his eyes off of us. And I will stand here and say also that we are a people who are vulnerable. We are vulnerable when we don't read the word like we should, when we're not praying like we ought to. That's why Jesus said, watch and pray. How does the devil attack us? I believe, first of all, to diminish our faith. He wants to diminish our faith. He does. And to diminish our faith, to weaken our faith, the devil, he's very artful and skilled at this, he's the master at it, the super destroyer, the devil will send a storm to try to shake us to the core. He did that to the 12 disciples. If any man, if any men should have been close to Jesus, it should have been those, those men. They walked with him. They talked with him. They were with him every day. They heard him. They saw him. But once upon a time, while on a fishing boat in the Sea of Galilee, while he was uh, in the bottom of that boat, a storm came. The waves were rocking the boat. The thunder was sounding. The lightning was striking. It was probably in the, well, it was in the night, uh, the deep into the night, so black skies, dark. Very fearful time. And we find that it says to us in Matthew 8, 25 and 26 that they awoke Jesus. They woke him up and they said, Lord, we're, we're, we're fearful. We're, we're going to perish in this sea. And Jesus said, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and there was a great calm. I tell you, those men were fortunate because he was right there in the boat with them. They were right there where they could call on him so easily. He said, well, the storms that happen here in life, he's not with us. He's, he's in heaven. He's at the right hand of the throne of his Father. What did I say? I said, Jesus sent to us the Holy Spirit. He is still with us. It says to us in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In the Great Commission, he said in Matthew 28, 20, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And all we've got to do is call upon him in the midst of the storms of life. Just call upon him. Isaiah 41, 10, again, he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Satan longs for us to sin. He wants to diminish our faith, and he wants us to sin, to sin against God. That's why we need to watch and pray. He wants to entrap us, to ensnare us, and use whatever bait. He's like a fisherman, and he wants to catch us the fish of the sea, the sea of life. He wants to catch us, and he especially likes to go to the aquariums, that is, churches, where he finds Christians, and he wants to catch us in the aquarium, in the churches, us as Christian fish. Have you ever heard that before? You have now. He wants to tempt us to commit sin. He does. It's like um, this uh, man went to church one time and on his way to the steps he found a wallet laying down on the ground right beside the steps. He picked it up, opened it up, and saw there was a whole bunch of money inside that wallet. So I know it wasn't mine. <laughs> he found a whole lot of money in that wallet. And he went home and told his wife about it. 
She said, well, did you turn it in? Did you take it inside the church? He said, well, honey, right now I'm trying to, I, I don't know yet. I'm trying to find out if it's uh, discover, if it's temptation by the devil or an answer to prayer. It certainly wouldn't an answer to prayer. A little boy was playing in the yard, and his mama found him one day in the neighborhood yard. And there was some wild kids over there and some dogs and everything. She thought it was dangerous for him to be over there. She told him, her little boy, don't you go over there into the neighbor's yard. And to help prevent it, she put a fence around her yard, thinking it would keep him in her own backyard. Well, after she put the fence up, a few days later, she saw her little boy was over there in the neighborhood yard again. And she also noticed a hole in the fence so that he could cross over into that other yard. She looked at her little boy and she called him over and she said, Have I taught you before to always pray to the devil, get behind me, Satan? The little boy looked at his mama and said, Yes, mama, you taught me that. Well, what happened? I, I see that you, are, you were at the neighbor's yard. How'd you get over there? Did you not pray that prayer? Get thee behind me, Satan? He said, yes, mama, I did. I made a hole in the fence, and I said, Satan, get behind me. And he pushed me in <laughs> to the yard. <laughs> Satan will not push us. He will not make us do anything. He will tempt us, but every decision we make is on our own. We are all accountable while responsible for every action that we make. Peter understood about the temptations of the devil, and Peter was one who learned the hard way you need to watch and pray. And later on, Peter would write in his epistle, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he said, be sober, be vigilant. And the word sober there is not a, in reference to sobriety. It, it means to watch. And the biblical definition of the word sober means to watch. So be sober, be vigilant. And again, the word vigilant Two also means to watch and watch carefully. He said, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, that is our enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is on the attack. The devil comes our way. We need to watch and we need to pray. We need to put on the armor and defend ourselves from the attacks of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We need to stay awake and watch and watch constantly to constantly we need to be on the lookout. Again, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. To watch and pray carefully, to watch carefully, we must absorb ourselves into the Word of God. And did you not notice, did you not see that every time in those wilderness temptations when the devil approached Jesus, every time Jesus came back by quoting Scripture? You know why? Because the devil knows what's in this book. The devil knows what is in this book from binding to binding, from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. He knows every word. He has read it. He has studied us. He knows what the word says. The devil knows what the final chapter says. He knows how the story ends. He knows of his ultimate doom. And so the devil gets nervous any time. That's why I suggest that we all earnestly make an effort to try to study and, and to memorize Scripture. Therefore, if we're in a place where we don't have the Bible with us, and the devil is tempting us to sin, quote the Scripture. That's a weapon, folks. Hebrews 4.12 says it's a weapon. It says the Word of God is quick. That means alive. It is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Amen. It is a weapon. And in the spiritual armor, 
in Ephesians 6, 17, it says we should take the sword, which is the word of God. I've always said an apple a day, well, no, I didn't always say this. this is, we've always heard. An apple a day will help keep the doctor away. I've always said a verse of scripture a day will help keep the devil away. Now, then I will say to watch and watch carefully. And, and by the way, before I get to my next one, this is about to conclude this. I, 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 getting back to the Bible, I believe if we'd spend as much time every day, every one of us, and I don't make this comment geared toward, toward any age, it's everyone, whether we are nine years old or we're 99. But all of us in this electronic age, if we'd spend as much time in the Bible every day as we do on our phones, on our tablets, on our iPads, on our computers, if we'd spend as much time every day as we do watching the television, we'd be a lot stronger Christians. We'd be a whole lot better in the eyes of God and better equipped in this spiritual warfare of life. And then I go to my last point, and that is to watch and watch carefully. To watch and watch carefully, I say this, that we must pray. I believe Jesus, when he was in that wilderness, not only was he watching, he was praying. He told the disciples to do that. He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. We must watch. Keep our eyes open on the lookout and pray. Read the word, study it, be prepared, have the weapon. This is the weapon when the devil comes our way. Combat him. Fight against him with the word of God. And, and then we need to pray. We need, I, I believe that the devil gets nervous I believe he trembles when Christians pray. If we are able to get on our knees, and many of us aren't able to get on our knees anymore, posture and prayer is not really that the important things. That there are we praying. And when we pray, I believe the devil gets nervous. He gets scared. He trembles. Jesus said in the model prayer that Bonda played a little while ago, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And listen to this, verse 13, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lead us not into temptation, we need to pray every day. Every one of us need to read God's word and we need to pray, God, lead us not into temptation. Protect me from temptation. Help shield me from temptation. The Almighty once said, being tempted is not a sin. It's giving in to the temptation that is the sin. Because we can't help what the devil may do to, to tempt us. We can't help that. Uh, we might can improve some situations by not being in certain places and around certain things that would cause us to be tempted. There's some things we can do. But overall, the devil's going to tempt us. So being tempted is not the sin. It's giving in to the temptation is the sin. And, and so let me tell you, look, I, I just close with this. I, I, I'm going to be as blunt and honest as I can on this. Hey, the devil is running out of time. He is, boy, he is fiercely angry. He is angry, and the devil is on the war path. We have been seeing great things happen in our church and still seeing great things happen in our church. The devil's mad about it. He's mad about it. And he will try to do whatever he can to destroy the church. We must not let it happen. We need to watch and we need to pray. Read the word, study it, absorb yourself into it, have this weapon in your hand. Always be on the lookout. When he comes, say, get thee hence, Satan. Quote some scripture. It'll shake him up. It'll make him run like a, 
like a rabbit running from a dog. He's scared of God's word. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, friends and family, watch and pray. Let us pray.